I had a good relationship with Sir Robert Menzies, an area where I was one up on John Howard, who met Menzies only once, <coughs> briefly. Dame Patty Menzies was a self-confessed fan of mine from Pickerbox. <laughs> <coughs> and whenever Sir Robert uh, uh, caught my eye, he always gave me a grave salute. <laughs> he was well aware of my involvement with the ALP as a candidate and, of course, later as an MP. When Sir Robert retired and lived in Malden, I'd occasionally run into Dame Patty at the supermarket and she'd say, why don't you come round and talk to him? He's bored and unhappy and you could cheer him up. <laughs> well, I tried. <laughs> Apart from our private conversations, I did an hour-long radio interview with him, preserved on a CD, and kept extensive notes of our conversations. He was always accessible by telephone. In a smile for my parents, his daughter, Heather Henderson, quoted approvingly remarks that I'd made about him. He recognised that many of the issues he campaigned on were now anachronistic. He told me that there were three achievements that he wanted to be remembered for. First, the revolution in the position of universities. Second, as an enemy of sectarianism, breaking down religious prejudice and bigotry in the Catholic and Protestant divide. And third, developing Canberra as a national capital and encouraging institutions to move their headquarters to the ACT. And of course, none of the three had ever been raised in his election campaign. Oh, and he also, I'll interpolate that, he, he also remarked that uh, uh, Jefferson had become his great hero. And uh, he said, do you know what Jefferson has in his tombstone? And I said, well, yes, I do, actually. <laughs> uh, anyway, he went on. He said, um, what Jefferson had on his tombstone was it had Thomas Jefferson, 1754, 1826, year of birth and death. And then it said, author of the Virginian, Decla uh, uh, author of the Virginian Declaration of Religious Freedom, author of the, American, uh, of the United States Declaration of Independence, and founder of the University of Virginia, full stop. No reference to the fact that he'd been President of the United States for two terms. No reference to the fact that he'd been Secretary of State. No reference to the fact that he'd been a Senator. Just those three things. And Menzies thought that was pretty cool. I think. Now, the, um, he admitted that his attempts to stave off the inevitable in some major areas had not been spectacularly successful. For example, preventing self-government in India. Uh, uh, <laughs> opposing, opposing Mao's taking of power in China, uh, uh, an independent Indonesia. He hadn't, preserved, he hadn't preserved the Suez Canal in Egypt for uh, Britain and France. Uh, the apartheid regime in South Africa wasn't looking too flash. Uh, and of course, he'd always opposed Macmillan's winds of chain speech. And of course, his Fears of a communist invasion of Australia had been slightly exaggerated. Now, as the creator of the Liberal Party, he despaired about the quality of the leaders who succeeded him. Holt, Gorton, McMahon, Snedden. He had some admiration for Malcolm Fraser and regretted never having made him a minister. In 2015, John Howard made a two-part television series Howard on Menzies for the ABC, and he invited me to be interviewed. Now, I had plenty of new material and spent several hours, in fact, the whole morning, filming with him. I thought he'd be thrilled with my new material. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> Far from it. Obviously, I told him what he did not want to hear. Now, I was not completely excluded from the program, so that all that remained were two or three quite inconsequential remarks, absolutely nothing of substance. And oddly, the programs that edited to such an extent, they were not shown until 2018. All right.